In our next segment, the United Nations explains its role in Southern Sudan's referendum in January 2011. With us today we have Mr. Dennis Kadima. Mr. Kadima is the director of the United Nations Integrated Referendum and Electoral Division, in short, UNIRED. Welcome to Uncover Sudan. Mr. Kadima, what are the lessons learned from the last April elections um, when Sudan had its elections last year, well, this year? Yeah, we have learned quite um, a lot of lessons uh, um, during the election time. Uh, in terms of uh, operations, how to, to improve the flow uh, of uh, you know, our logistical support and that kind of things. But the m most important lesson that we learned was that UNMIS was working on its, uh, its own plans to support the national electoral authorities while um, UN UNDP had also its own staff and its own uh, mechanisms to support the same body. So the recommendation was to bring these uh, two groups, two teams together into an integrated team ahead of uh, the referendum so that uh, the work can be better uh, coordinated and coherent. So that is the main lessons, uh, one of the main lessons. That's why we today have uh, UNIRED which is composed of uh, staff from both um, UNMIS and UNIRED. Then what is the exact role of UNMIS in this upcoming referenda? Overall, uh, we have a logistical role to support uh, the Commission in terms of the uh, voter registration and uh, um, uh, voting, the polling itself, how to, to, to dispatch the material and so on, and retrieve the same material at the end of the process. Uh, and that, that is a huge uh, undertaking. But also, we, we have also another very important role, which is uh, the provision of technical assistance in terms of advice. You know, we, need, we, we advise them on what are out there the best options for them to have a successful process. The parties have asked for specific assistance from UNMIS. Um, what have they requested? And is UNMIS able to deliver on these requests? Yeah, they've uh, made a number of requests. In the area, of, I mean, they have, on the one hand, uh, pro, uh, requested for uh, technical assistance. On the other hand, they've requested for the UN to come and observe or monitor the process. Uh, of course, these, normally th these two tasks are incompatible. You can't be providing te technical assistance, but at the same time observing the same process because it will be like being a uh, party and jury uh, at the same time. So um, in terms of assistance, as I said, UNMIS and the other UN uh, departments and, 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 and um, member uh, agencies, I mean, are there to provide uh, advice, how to conduct the process, how to plan, how to, to, to even recruit and, and train their people, deploy them and so on. Okay, talking about the challenges, I mean the, the, your support, mm. what are the challenges that you seem to have come you know, against? What are the greatest challenges so far for you? Uh, the first one is the legal challenge. The law is not clear on a number of uh, provisions. And if it's not clarified, it will have an impact on the operations. So that's the first challenge. The second one is the security situation in the country. We must, we are hoping that during the referendum, all these pockets of uh, tensions and, and, and agitation won't uh, escalate and make the, the, the situation uh, more difficult than it is already. And the other one is in terms of infrastructure. You know, the infrastructure in the country is not uh, the best, so it will take a lot of effort to get things around. And uh, the last one, last but not the least, is the time uh, frame. The timeline that we have uh, is fairly short. Uh, the commission has only become operational essentially less than, than, less than two weeks ago. So to manage all these processes up to the 9th of January, it's uh, certainly a big challenge. How much has been budgeted towards uh, the referenda? The budget is being finalized but we have worked with the Commission to advise them on what should be the budget and also working with our international partners 
the donors. We have uh, requested their financial support. So essentially the budget will come from the two parties, uh, one being the donors, the other one being, of course, the government of Sudan. Has a timeline been issued by the Referenda Commission? Yeah, the timeline has not been issued, but we are working, of course, on uh, uh, the basis of this deadline of the 9th of January, which is a date uh, that is actually rooted in the CPA itself. So they have not come up with a timeline, but we, of course, have the, a clear understanding that the procurement of material will take more or less this time and the, the dispatching of this material will also take a certain number of weeks and then uh, we have uh, the exhibition and objections you know by uh, potential voters before we move to, to to the poll itself before even that we have the campaign and then you have the poll so we have a sense of the different steps but the commission need to come up with a firm resolution about uh, a calendar then we can say this is now cast in stone. Okay, and, and is this issue about vote, vote eligibility, um, has vote eligibility criteria been clarified? It has not been yet clarified, but the Commission has clarified that yet. Uh, they still have to, to think and consult with their lawyers and come up with different interpretations. At this moment, it's something that is outstanding and, and until a decision is made, uh, you know, like vote education can start because people must know what are the, what are the qualifications to, to participate, whether you are in the south, in the north or out of the country. That's all we have for you today and it's a pleasure to have Mr. Kadima with us for these enlightening um, issues. Thank you very much and all the best.